The system of rice intensification, known as SRI, is a set of farming practices developed to increase the productivity of land and water, as well as the productivity of labor and capital. Compared to the commonly known flooded rice production, successful applications of SRI have shown that farmers can raise their paddy yields by 50 to 100 percent or more while using fewer farm inputs, especially water. This presentation focuses on the benefits and limitations of SRI application. A separate presentation will provide a step-by-step -step guide for farmers. How did SRI begin? It is the result of over 20 years of fieldwork begun in the 1960s by Henri de Lolanier, a French farming practitioner living in Madagascar. So, what is SRI? It has six key elements that make it differ from conventional or common rice growing. First, seedlings get transplanted at a much younger age. Second, only a single seedling, instead of a handful of seedlings, gets planted in each hill. Third, plants are spaced much wider apart in a square pattern. Fourth, intermittent water application is used to create wet and dry soil conditions instead of continuous flood irrigation. Fifth, rotary weeding is used to control weeds and to promote soil aeration. Last, the increasing use of organic fertilizers enhances soil fertility. Since the 1990s, through the efforts of Norman Uphoff, a faculty member from Cornell University, and the efforts of many farmers, scientists, and researchers, SRI has spread to many countries. Today, the merits of this new practice of rice farming have been demonstrated in 30 countries around the world. The adaptation of SRI varies by location, depending on soil conditions, climate, local customs, and farmers' comfort level to try new methods. But the basic elements remain the same. SRI has also generated debates, skeptics, and both successful and failed field trials. So what are the benefits of SRI? First, higher yields and better rice quality. Wider spacing and single planting increases the exposure of plants to sunlight, air, and nutrients. Boosted by intermittent watering, plants grow larger and more effective root systems than with common methods. This in turn produces healthier plants with stronger stalks and more tillers, leading to higher yields as reported in many places. In Andhra Pradesh, India, SRI fields achieve two additional tons per hectare on average while using 90% less seed and 50% less water. In Sichuan, China, rice yields have increased up to 40% using SRI. In Mindanao, the Philippines, the average yield per hectare reached 10 tons, compared to 5 tons under common practices in the same area. In Indonesia, when SRI paddy is milled, it yields about 15% more polished rice per bushel in addition to less broken rice. Due to its better flavor and quality, SRI rice has gained higher market price compared to conventionally grown rice in the area. Another significant benefit is the reduction in water requirements for irrigated paddy. Using water efficiently has become critical in irrigated agriculture, given population growth, 
higher water demand from other sectors, and climate change. Compared with common practices, water requirements under SRI can be reduced by 25 to 50 percent since paddy yields are not kept flooded during the vegetative stage. In Indonesia, a five-year study showed an average water savings of 40 percent with an average yield increase of almost 80 percent. In the Philippines, water requirements were 23 percent less than with conventional methods, and in some places up to 12 tons per hectare in paddy yields were achieved with less water. Intermittent irrigation causes soils to crack, which promotes soil aeration, nutrient mobilization, and root elongation. Roots grow larger and deeper than those grown with flooded conditions, as flooding causes degeneration from lack of oxygen. Field results have shown that stronger stalks and longer root systems shown in SRI plants are more resistant to drought, waterlogging, and storms and typhoons. SRI can also reduce production costs, especially for seeds, fertilizers, as well as energy in the case of pump irrigation. SRI farmers reduce their seeds requirements by 80 to 90 percent compared with common practices. Since fewer seedlings are needed per hectare and they are transplanted when small, farmers find nursery management easier, faster, and less labor-intensive. In Indonesia, an evaluation of over 12,000 trials of on-farm comparison, covering an area of 9,400 hectares, showed that SRI not only reduced water requirements, but also reduced fertilizer input by 50 percent and lowered total production costs per hectare by 20 percent. SRI benefits not just farmers, but also the environment through reduced use of water and less application of chemical fertilizers. Organic fertilization increases water holding capacity of the soil and the abundance and diversity of soil organisms, making it healthier and more fertile for sustainable crop production. Even though SRI offers many benefits, let us discuss some constraints to its expansion. The main constraint comes from the psychological resistance to changing practices and customs. Rice cultivation has been practiced for thousands of years in some cultures, and adopting SRI requires a major shift in mindset and farming practices. Therefore, knowledge sharing and dissemination is critical. Pilot and demonstration farms from successful farmers themselves are most effective to allow other farmers to see the results first hand. Another constraint is technical, relating to irrigation. An important element of SRI is good on-farm water management, including drainage, controlled water intake, and reliable delivery when water is needed during the wet cycles. Governments can help farmers to have reliable irrigation services by providing well-maintained and operated irrigation infrastructure. Government leaders, managers, and engineers will need to keep future needs in mind when making irrigation investment decisions. SRI requires labor for transplanting, weeding, 
on-farm water management, and application of organic fertilizers. Field practices show that farm labor inputs increase for some farmers and decrease for others. In the SRI area of the Philippines, the labor input cost has increased by about 20 percent. On the contrary, in Sichuan and Zhejiang provinces of China, SRI farmers cited labor savings as an incentive for switching to SRI. Reports from Indonesia show that once farmers gained skills and confidence in the SRI method after some seasons of practices, they found it either labor-neutral or labor-saving. SRI practices are still evolving. Not all field trials were successful. There are still skeptics in SRI's ability to reach high yields with less input. Some scientists are concerned about the constraints of applying SRI in large scale. With an increasing number of field results being reported by farmers and practitioners around the world, SRI application has demonstrated that producing more from less is not a myth. In conclusion, SRI provides a new window of opportunity for raising food production that is increasingly facing challenges of population growth, competition for water, and a changing climate.